okay, I'm going to do another video. I've done several of them. And the reason I'm going to do another video is because I can watch videos over and over and over again. And I watch about a video every, I watch a video at least three or four times a week on Flint now. Young people, old people, whoever did it. But uh, the biggest problem everybody has is standing their points and keeping the width and all and running long plates. So I'm going to start off with this big old thick square slab. And this is a center line right there. And anything below this center line you want to hit on. Anything above it you don't. So right here is we've got a platform. If you can see this, it's below the center line. So when I come over here, here's another one right here below the center line. Now, when we come over here, we've got one right here below the center line. So I'm using this piece. I'm not going to map on it. I'm just using it as an illustration. Uh, let me get my stuff ready here. to show you what I'm talking about. So if it's above the center line, you can hit it. And if you hit the right angle and the right uh, way that you build it, you can knock long plates off of it. Now, to change the center line, and this is why I'm doing this, I'm hitting down. Remember I told you in one of my videos, anytime you hit down, you bring it up. And when you're looking at it, it's up. So I'm hitting down and I'm bringing it up. Now remember what I said, I'm hitting down. And when I turn it over like this, it brought it up. As you can see, that's your platform. But when you hit it, it's going to be down. So, it, so it's up, and then you turn it the right way and it's down. So anytime you hit down, you're going to bring your platform up. Same thing over here. Now, now I've told you that, I'm going to put this piece up over here, and I'm going to get a, a regular piece I knocked off a piece of Georgetown, and uh, we're going to work with it. Well, it had a crack in it right quick, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's see. I got another piece. I didn't look at that one. We'll just use this one. It don't have to be that big. Okay, now what did I do with my chalk? I done lost my chalk. I'll be done. All right. That leaves my pants. I didn't have them buckled up. Okay. No chalk. Might have to go back look at my video see what I did with it. All right. This is not going to show up. But when you look at this piece, this is below the center line right here when you're looking at it. That's the only real good platform I got right now. And it's a pretty good one, so I'm going to go ahead and hit on it and see what I can run off with it. I keep looking for my chalk. I might find it in a minute. But uh, this piece ran halfway down it, as you can see. So I'm going to come over here on this corner and run it down that ridge. I'm going to come in and run it down this ridge like this. So now this side is looking pretty good. We got a thick area right in here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come this way. I'm gonna hit down, and it's bringing it up. But when I turn it over, it's down. I got me a nice platform to hit off. So that was get over hit down, turn it over, and it's down. Dropped it down. Alright, we'll try to bring this hump out right here. We'll grind it. We'll hit it. Taking it out. Okay, this side with the cortex on it is flat. And if you're looking, uh, Pay attention to this guys, and once again, I'm going to take my glasses off and see if I might have dropped my chalk down here somewhere, but I don't see it, but I see something that might make a mark. It'll do better than this pencil. Okay. we got a hump. When you look down, it's going up. we got a hump right here. I can come across this way and follow this ridge. I think it's going to be my first... Uh, angle I'm going to take over the first plate removal 
Well, I got a natural platform. I just need to grind it a little bit. And, uh, so Kevin will come in just like this. And look at that. What's come out. Now I'm going to show you something else. Another reason he might not be running long plates is because you're hitting right on the edge. Look how high up I hit on that edge. I hit like a, maybe an eighth of an inch up on it because I was wanting to move mass. Hitting up on high is not a good idea at all if you're trying to thin something that's already real thin and it's got like a weak spot in it, one part's thinner than another part. That's when you want to clip, clip the edges on it. Okay. Now, I'm going to come right here. I'm going to hit down. Another thing, making this, uh, thinning this out, I'm not going to try to save the length because I just want to show you different ways of moving material. Now, we're going to come down this ridge right here. That piece run right down the ridge. Come over here, raise it up. Come back over here, get down, it's gonna raise it up. And then when I turn it over, it's gonna be below the center line. Now I don't wanna hit, don't wanna move much, I also hit right on the edge. And I know it's gonna be hard to tell so I just barely clipped that edge with that one. And I didn't hit up high at all on it. Okay, this side's pretty flat. So now what we want to do is get this cortex off. And so I'm not worried about the length. So I'm going to tack it from the end. To try to help you understand how to set your platform up. Your platforms are the most important part of flat mapping. And once again, if you don't understand what a platform is, the platform is the part you strike on, like a step on a stairway. Right there's a platform. This is flat. It's not a platform. Here's a platform. Something that you can come down and strike on and, and move some mass on that material. So. I had a hard time trying to explain to a guy I was teaching one time what a platform was, and I was talking to him over the telephone, and uh, I just said, like your steps, going down the steps, each step would be a platform if that was a solid piece. But anyway, that's your platform. So we're going to go back to this piece I'm working on. And what I'm going to do is set me some platforms up and move this cortex. And I'm gonna try to run a flake. It'll probably go about halfway down there. Let's see. No, it went about a quarter of the way. That one went halfway. One did and one did. Now, it's hard to knock a flake off when you got Right, like Georgetown has got this cortex, this limestone. You always want to try to hit on the, on the rock itself instead of hitting on that limestone. And the way you do that is you'll hit right here and angle it this way like this. And then it's going to leave you a clean spot out of that cortex. Come back a little bit more if it's not clean enough. And do it again. I'm going to turn it over and show you what I'm talking about. You have a clean spot right under that cortex there. So I'm gonna hit this way, try to run one three quarters of the way across, and I'm back and do it again. Now I'm gonna hit back this way, I'm gonna get me a clean spot under the cortex again. And here it is, that's my clean spot right there. I'm gonna come down, hit, and I'm gonna come back this way, Getting off of the chalk, I've got to hit the solid rock and try not to touch that chalk at all. And there we go. Now, I'm going to come off the tip because I'm not trying to save the length. We're just trying to show you how to set up platforms so you can thin something fast and move large masses 
the rock, if it's real thick, we don't need to on this because this is not just thick. But anyway, one long plate so you can thin it real quick. You can thin it good. You still save a lot of your width. Every time that I go around doing what I'm doing right here, tap it on that edge, guess what? I'm making it more narrow and more narrow and narrow. If you keep going around and tapping on that edge, setting up platform, before long you won't have nothing but a drill. The next thing you know, you have a piece of rock looks like a piece of spaghetti. It's so narrow. So if you want to save your width, you need to try to set up the best platform possible at the start and move as much mass as you can off of it. These are not good enough, so they'll come down and hit a little more. But I'd rather do that than create a hinge, and then sure enough have to move a lot, because then I'd lose a lot of width. All right, here's a good one right here. That one halfway across. That one halfway across. All right, your cortex is gone. Now, if you look, we got a little hill right here. So I'm going to come off of this, and I'm going to run it that way. Now, if I was trying to save my length, I'd come across there. But it's so much easier because it's almost was natural to come this way. But if I'd want to save the length, I would make me a platform and come across. See how nice that one worked? There we go. All right. Now, when we get to this stage, and I'm not going to do it right now, but that's when I usually use my hollow bopper. It's a little piece of PCB pipe that's hollow, no weight, and just a little copper cap on it. Now, if you start off with a piece and you, you're doing everything you think right, and the plates are not running very far across, and it's a, a thick piece, especially like this, big thick piece, you don't have enough weight. Your billet's not heavy enough. But when you get them thin, and they're like this, you don't need much weight. And that hollow, that hollow bopper so light, it's so easy to control. You hardly make any mistakes with it. The accuracy is just pulling on with that thing. All right, now, I got a hump right here. So I'm gonna come this way and I'm gonna lose some width. Cause I'm hitting down. And every time you hit out on this thing, it's gonna get narrow and narrow and narrow. But we're at the point now where it's almost a finished product. Just needs a little pressure flake and it'll be ready to go. Yep. There. Now I need to move one right up here. Right on this spot. There we go. Take one off there. Right now, I'm going to run one from the tip this way. Like that. I'm going to come across this way. I'm, th I'm thinning this base by doing this. Because the base has got to be narrow to start with. I ain't worried about keeping it wide. I'm going to hit right here. And that cross. Get there. That was barely hanging on. It wouldn't cross it. Stuck. Okay, I'm gonna come back up here and get on this tip one more time. I'm gonna flop over to the other side. There we go. Now it's time to come back across. We'll have that real thin. And when I come across, and this is one of these things I'm trying to help you understand, and I watch people talking about this, and they're all correct in what they're saying, but different people explain it different ways. And sometimes they might say something and you say, hey, I didn't understand what John was talking about, and it clicks. Or I might say something and you say, hey, I didn't understand what so-and-so was talking about, even though they were saying the same thing, but just seeing the music, the method or whatever. So now I'm going to come right through here. Yep. 
and this is where it's going to be important. I have a hinge here, so I need it to run halfway across, and that's where having a good platform set up, and it will take the hinge out. The hinge is completely gone. Now we've got one real thin piece. This is a hollow, little lightweight copper gas cap or whatever you want to call it over there. Just lightly tap, but it'll break it. Don't need to be heavy. And this is my finishing tool that I use 90% of the time to, to finish my fitted out. And I, I love working with these billets. It took me several days of playing with them to get the feel of them. But Eddie Main introduced me to these, and I talk about them in all my videos. And boy, they do the job. They will flat run the plate. Now, I'm trying to learn indirect percussion. That's a new ball game for me. And I've been practicing with it off and on for about, I don't know, about a year now probably, but not very much. And so here lately, I've kind of caught up on orders and stuff. I've been putting a lot more time. In fact, I did a video on it. And this is when I would definitely go to indirect percussion. But as you see, I can see this joker just as thin right now using this method as I can with indirect percussion. Because I'm learning indirect percussion. When I get it mastered, that won't be true. But I tell you what, I make it doggone thin using this method right here. All right, I'm gonna grind it. And I don't grind it hard. That plate went halfway across. That plate went halfway across. That plate went halfway across. So. I see one little hump on it. I'm gonna get it out real quick. And then I'll probably stop. I don't know, I might do a few little indirect percussion blows. Okay, that hump's out. Come on down here. I like this because I could even make the point without pressure plate and using this thing. It's so easy to control once you get the feel of it because it's a lightweight. It really helps if you're getting old and your shoulders are hurting and your arms and stuff because it's so lightweight. I highly recommend learning to use this method using this pipe here. Okay, now. Indirect percussion. I just got a long copper rod and I stick it in my belt loop. And I got a big old uh, elk antler. And uh, I'm going to find me a natural place and just take some off to show you how much better you can get it and how much you can shape it up with it. I'm going to take a little piece off right here and we'll set it, set it right there, hit it, and that plate come off across there. So now I'm going to turn it over here and hit it, so I can hit it, and that plate went off there. When I say hit it, when I went down to hit, I moved it away. I'm flinching. <laughs> I've got a bad habit of flinching. Instead of just sitting there put, and uh, that's what I was talking about when I said hit it. It's easy to hit, but if you move it, it's not. <laughs> I think I've run so many pieces in my fingers over here, I just can feel that fix of the hat, but I want to get my hand out of the way and I move the rock out of the way. I don't know if y'all can see this or not. I get so busy thinking about what my next move is. I get to look and see if you can see it on the camera. But I'm sorry about that. Might tomorrow or next day do a continued series with this on a huge piece, and that way you can really see the platform rather than something where the platform is so thin, they're hard to see. Now, 
I would run two or three more passes to it in direct percussion, and I'd have this baby real thin, but it's pretty thin like it is. Still got some high air, but that's how I do it. Now the bar, I've got some some of this stuff heat treating. Now I might continue this video using one where you can really, really see the platforms, and it's huge, and to see how far you can run uh, a plate off of something huge like this. I can do it without it being heat treated. I hadn't tried it without being heat treated. We're going to see how far we can run this one. And there's my perfect platform out there. Look at that. Now, this is not heat treated. Look, look how far it went. Three quarters of the way across. Now, look at the platform. And it was a massive platform. Let's see if I can put it back just like it was. Uh, piece of it's missing. Piece where I hit right there is missing. But I hit like an eighth of an inch. I hit like an eighth of an inch. I'm sorry, I got out of focus on that. So, anyway, if your platform's set up right, somebody told me one day, so you must be uh, working heat treated material because you're running flakes for long. Look at that. I said, yeah. I said, but in that video, it wasn't heat treated, it was Georgetown. I never heat treated Georgetown. And this is kill cut, it's raw. And I know you can work it raw, I'm not saying you can't. I'm just trying to show you it's not heat treated, how far you run your plates, if you hit it right. And we went all the way down to there, and that was just a little narrow ridge. It wasn't much, it went as far as it could go, because that's all it had to follow. It had a dip in it. But anyway, we'll, we might work on that tomorrow and finish this. And hope y'all have a blessed day. And a uh, bunch y'all been praying for me. Uh, I've had some, a lot of difficulty with some medication they had me on. I put a stent in and I had some side effects of some of the blood thinner and stuff. But I'm doing great, feeling great, and back at it again. Appreciate your prayers.